to exhaust it with us. <laughs> this is my people at the back end. They will not kill me. <laughs> now, National Roots Day is observed on December 23rd. The day encourages family to delve into their family history, heritage, and ancestry. Now, every year during the holidays is an ideal time to collect family information. While family gather around the table, um, telling stories and sharing memories, someone is sure to be the family historian. It is um, entirely possible uh, to be like a grandparent or an aunt or uncle and that has um, already started a family tree and will also share with the other family members on this day their history. I know Isi will be that family member that will be sharing history. You know how to share history very well. Funny enough, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> If it, if it starts with my father, okay, my great, my grandfather, mm. oh, I do. Oh, <laughs> see, she has to, I, I, I'm not even, see, it, respect me, to, I see, I see people's future. <laughs> but you have to be at ho a home girl, you yeah, know. Yeah, you, you are. Able to, you, mm. you know, for you to be able to decode things like this mm. and want to know about your family history. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we get to know things like this so that we can pass it from generation to generation. generation yeah. Just like the story about Roots. Mm -hmm. I have forgotten the name, Alex. Uh, I've forgotten his name that wrote the book, Roots. Mm. And he was able to track the family history, history back to Gambia. Mm. So we, he knew where he was from, even Kunta Kinte, the story of Kunta Kinte. You see why you're the historian? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just here to listen. <laughs> It's very important that we yeah. talk about things like yeah. this to our children so that we can pass it from generation to generation. Absolutely. Totally. Historia. I, sh I shut up. Have you yeah. accepted the, the title now? <laughs> <laughs> so what did you find for us in the news? Okay. Today in the news, um, we are tired of people stealing people's children. Mm -hmm. We're tired of people coming and um, having baby factories. We're tired of people not being able to account for having someone's child with them and not knowing who that child is. Mm -hmm. So um, the immigration, actually, the story that caught my attention was the story about the immigration that res rescued a three-week-old baby who mm -hmm. was being trafficked in Calabar, Cross River State. Mm -hmm. According to the news, it was stated that um, a three-week-old baby suspected to be a victim of child trafficking was on Tuesday rescued at the Marine Patrol Team by the Nigerian Immigration Service mm -hmm. in Cross River State. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oke Zugu in Cross River, who is a com controller of the um, Nigerian Immigration um, Service, identified a woman who is supposed to be the trafficker, Mrs. Maureen Awokara. This Mrs. Maureen Awokara, this is the key thing here. She wasn't able to explain who this child is. Now, the child traffickers have now devised other means of having to um, move the babies. Move, the, move children, exactly, transport children from place to place. Mm. And she um, used water this time instead of using the road. And when she was being asked, who this child is, how she got um, got to know about she this child. Couldn't. She couldn't explain anything about the child. Hmm. So it is important that we know, we ask people, even if, if there's a way a child would even behave, but this is a three week old hmm. baby. So hmm. it's a baby. Hmm. And she looks too mature, in fact, you know. Um, see, she let me tell you something. 14. I think why, uh, why we have a high rise in child trafficking is because of people are still, they are still battling with accepting surrogacy mm -hmm. or accepting what's it called um yeah mainly surrogacy you know mm -hmm. as an option to having a child you know because you've, you've you've been married for a while you don't want to embrace surrogacy as an option for having a child I, I, that's one then okay. secondly as well mm -hmm. a lot of women right a lot of women find it difficult to come to that realization that you know what at this point where i am at you know this something that cannot happen anymore. Yeah. So is it that you accept your fate and know that this thing doesn't define who I am as a woman exactly. and just move on? I exactly. think so. Not only women, actually both parties. You know, it, it still comes back to our, our, uh, our cultural heritage, mm. what we believe in culturally. Mm. If you look back to traditional concepts, we have individuals who don't believe that you have to carry a child from another woman mm -hmm. that they would call you barren or they would mm -hmm. say that is not your real child. Mm -hmm. So family also plays a huge role or the, mm -hmm. the, the, the locality or mm -hmm. the 
um, culture you come mm. from also plays then a I was going to even add and again. money yeah. also hey, plays I was going to add a huge role that surrogacy also this. is expensive. It's so expensive. So it's cheaper for them to just say, you know what, mm -hmm. you know, let me just carry this baby. And cheaper the baby for me. And yeah. walk away. Because surrogacy is quite expensive. Like that, I'm just hoping someone... that the government can actually look into it because mm -hmm. there are many people. I remember that when Ibido in Godalo passed, um, part yeah. of what she wanted to do for her. Um, foundation of our 40th birthday was, was to have, to have um, babies you know have helped a lot of uh, families the, the you know actually yeah did. 40 40 families yes 40 families mm -hmm. you know for 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 the for the for her 40th birthday to give because I mean, that surrogacy is very expensive, mm -hmm. you know, so she wanted to do that. So imagine if government can come in to say, you know what, let us begin to look into this fertility issues because they will, this um, mm -hmm. what's called baby factory business will continue to thrive as long as they do not demystify that child, you know, that, that uh, oh, you know, that childbearing process. Mm -hmm. They need to demystify it and say, you know what, government will support and maybe subsidize or something. Government culture mm, mindset everything shift, shift yeah it's so important all right so my story is quite interesting and i'm happy the reason <laughs> i took this story is called tell me okay. when she comes on i want to ask her why okay. but she has told me off air but i will still ask her again <laughs> you know um i saw the story it was quite interesting i just said it thought to mention they said um nigerian nigerians to shun luxury items in 2021 that's the is latest report well <laughs> that's one is the question i want to ask Latest report from CBN, and they okay. are saying this um, that um, most Nigerian consumers are not likely to purchase expensive or luxury items in 2021, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria Consumer Expectation Survey that was carried out. Mm -hmm. Now, the report for December 2020 was released by the Statistics Department of the Apex Bank on Tuesday in Abuja, and according to the report, most consumers believed that next. The next one year would not be ideal for the purchase of high-costing items like vehicles and houses. Now, CBN also said that most of the respondents to the survey ex um, expected that the Naira, you know, m maybe the Naira would, you know, um, come down and all of that. Because I think, like what Timmy was saying be off air was that, you know, a lot of these luxury items are solely dependent on Forex. Mm -hmm. And with the high rise in, uh, what's it called? Forex. Forex, you know, it's only natural for people not to have the, the same Resources. buying power. A thousand dollars three, four years ago, can you can't compare what a thousand dollars is today. today. You know, part of why I want to lose weight. No. <laughs> <laughs> part of why I want to lose weight is economical for me to lose mm -hmm. weight because I cannot afford to buy clothes. I really don't like shopping in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I cannot afford to buy new clothes right mm -hmm. now because it is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. What you buy a hundred dollar uh, worth of clothes, you can't even get... Afford to get Yeah, you can't get the like same, yeah. So it's actually thing, crazy. You know, um, the president actually said that we should prep ourselves up for perilous times in the coming year. God will help him too. God help all of us. No, God will help him first. <laughs> <laughs> God will help him first. I but do not belong us, to this economy. Let me just say for that, the record. You know, Hold on. Stop. SAP has started started long time ago, starting from Babangida. Uh, yeah, we have time. to take a break. Wait, okay. I do not belong to this economy. I belong to heaven's economy. <laughs> so let me just take it out there. <laughs> we'll take a break. When we return, our guest, Tamiya Basanya, will join us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.